Hello everyone, my name is Dan, and today is October 3rd, 2020, which means it's National Mean Girls Day, you know, the popular movie Mean Girls. If you're wondering why today, of all days, is Mean Girls Day, if you remember that one scene from the movie. On October 3rd, he asked me what day it was. It's October 3rd. Two weeks later? Yeah, so again. October 3rd is Mean Girls Day. And to celebrate, we are going to do a classic limit problem that is at the climax of the entire movie, where our protagonist, Katie, needs to solve a limit problem in sudden death of the Mathletes competition. And the limit problem itself is not an easy one. It's actually one of the more advanced limits that you could possibly have in calculus. So let's go ahead and jump into the footage and see what we have to solve. Contestants, find the limit of this okay, equation. Okay, hold it right there. Okay, so there's our limit. So we have the limit as x approaches zero of the natural log of one minus x minus sine x over one minus cosine squared x. And in case you have no idea what limits are, pretty much the basic principle is you just want to plug in zero wherever you see x. And then the trouble is you usually end up with some kind of zero in the denominator and that's a problem for us. So we have here the limit as x approaches zero in the numerator, natural log of one minus x minus sine x x all over 1 minus cosine squared x. So first of all, if we were to plug in 0, what would we get? We would get natural log of 1 minus 0 minus sine of 0 divided by 1 minus cosine squared of 0. You can either do this from memory or you can get a calculator here, but we have here the natural log of 1, which is just 0, minus the sine of 0, which is also 0, divided by 1 minus What's the cosine of zero? That's going to be one, and that's quantity one squared, which is still one. Pretty much what we're getting here is a zero over zero case, which is known as indeterminate. So since we got zero over zero, it's indeterminate, which doesn't necessarily mean that the limit doesn't exist. It just means that we need to look for other ways to solve the limit. And actually, it's a very interesting case because since we have exactly zero in the numerator and zero in the denominator, we can do something known as L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital, the famous mathematician who is known for creating L'Hopital's rule. And what L'Hopital's rule says is that if you are taking a limit and you end up getting zero over zero, then what you can do is you can take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. And if you don't remember what a derivative is, derivative is essentially slope, and we can have all these different kind of formulas and shortcuts to find the derivative or the slope of any function. And luckily, we can easily find the derivative for both the numerator and the denominator. Now, before we take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator, one thing I would recommend doing, we notice here we have 1 minus cosine squared x in the denominator, and we all know that that is a trig identity. It's equal to sine squared of x. And that's because sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, if you remember that trig identity. And if we just subtract cosine squared x from both sides, we get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So that's how we can prove that this is equal to sine squared x, and that makes our lives a lot easier when we're taking the derivative. So now, taking the derivative of the numerator, we had natural log of 1 minus x minus sine x. The derivative of that, so the derivative of natural log of 1 minus x is going to be a fraction, where the numerator is the derivative of whatever's inside the natural log, and so the derivative of 1 minus x is just negative 1. That's a simple coefficient rule. And then in the denominator, we're going to put the whole thing 1 minus x. That's just the rule for natural logs, the derivatives of natural logs. And then minus the derivative of sine x, which that's just an easy cosine x, one of those you kind of just have to know. So there we go. We have the derivative of our numerator. And now that we need the derivative of our denominator, so that's going to be derivative now of, we said it was sine squared x. We simplified it to sine squared x. And the derivative of that is going to be, this is going to be a chain rule because we have two rules going on here. We have a power rule on the outside with the squared and the inside rule is the sine of x. And maybe it's kind of confusing in this notation. So I'm actually going to rewrite sine squared x to make it easier to see what's going on here. We really have sine squared x is the same thing as the sine of x squared. And now we can more easily see that we have a rule, the power rule, inside of another rule with the trigonometric function sine. The way we do chain rule is we say first we take the derivative of the outside, so what I have in red here, which is going to be 2 times sine of x, and that's going to be the 2 minus 1 power, 
which is the same thing as just the first power there. Then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of what's inside, which is sine x. And the derivative of sine x, once again, is cosine x. So our final derivative here is going to be 2 sine x cosine x. So there we go. We have the derivative of our numerator and the derivative of our denominator. And now what L'Hopital's rule says is that we can take the limit as x approaches 0 of now the derivative of the numerator which is negative 1 over 1 minus x minus cosine x divided by 2 sine x cosine x. And let's see what we get when we plug in 0 now. So we would get in the numerator negative 1 over 1 minus 0 minus cosine of 0 divided by 2 sine of 0 cosine of 0. And now if we think about what each of these values are, in the numerator we have negative 1 for negative 1 over 1 minus 0 minus the cosine of 0, which is also 1, divided by 2 times sine of 0 is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. But since we have 2 times 0 times 1, it's still going to be 0 in the denominator. So what we end up having here now is negative 2 over 0. So we notice that we still have the 0 in the denominator, but what I want you to think about is the fact that we have not 0 over 0 anymore, now we have negative 2 over 0. In other words, a constant over 0. And now the super important thing that distinguishes limits from the actual value of the function is the fact that limits don't say we're plugging in 0 directly, we're saying how does the graph behave as we're approaching this number. And it's kind of a confusing concept to understand, but just think of it this way. Limits, you know, you even see the notation, limit as x approaches 0. In other words, x doesn't equal 0, it's heading towards 0. In other words, if we were to plug in a number, a, a number close to 0, like 0 0.1, what would we get? Well, negative 2 divided by 0 0.1 is negative 20. And then if we were to plug in a number even closer to 0, like for instance 0 0.01, then we're just shifting the power of 10, move the decimal place over, you get negative 200. And you can keep doing this, you can even say negative 2 divided by 0 0.00001, and in that case you would get negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros after it. And as you can see, as you get closer to zero in the denominator, your output is getting closer and closer to negative infinity. And that's exactly what's going on here. So the actual value of the function is undefined because we're dividing by zero. But the limit, the limit as x approaches zero is actually heading towards negative infinity. And one of the first things they teach you in limits is that whenever you have a limit going towards either negative infinity or positive infinity, we're going to say that the limit does not exist, or D-N-E for short. And that's the answer to our question, the limit does not exist. So now let's jump back to our friend Katie and see if she can figure out this limit. Now we are in a sudden death. If Miss Heron can answer this problem correctly, we have a winner. Limits. Why couldn't I remember anything about limits? Limits. That was the week Aaron got his hair cut. Oh god, he looks so cute. Okay, focus, Katie. What was on the board behind Aaron's head? If the limit never approaches anything, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist! Our new state champions, the North Shore Mathletes. So as you can pretty much tell, this is a movie, this isn't real life. The amount of work that she did in the movie is not nearly the amount of work that is needed to actually prove that the limit does not exist. But we're going to let it slide because Mean Girls is a fantastic movie. And this was also well before Lindsay Lohan ended up in rehab. And that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching. My name is Dan the Tutor. If you have any other calculus questions in either a movie or real life, let me know and I'd be happy to solve them for you. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. How do you like